here for me. I'll come here today at the invitation of my friend Rufus, advocate, and others to share with you the idiosyncrasies of the Indian state with respect to language. You are not the only one who are struggling either for the dominance of the language in a particular code or even for the use of language in schools and colleges. We inherited at the time of the partition of the country a system which was alien to us. I want to share with you today, and many of you may not know, and that is why I'm going to link this with where this problem starts from and why this is being done by the state missionary from time to time. In 1849, the kingdom of Maharaja Ranjit Singh was annexed by the British. Before the annexation, ladies and gentlemen, you shocked to know before the introduction of the Macaulay system of education which we were taught as school children that you know Macaulay introduced, Lord Macaulay introduced the best English language education in the country. A few weeks ago I was sitting with an 80 year old Sikh gentleman who shared with me facts of teaching and education in the rule of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. And he told me that girls had 100% education. He told me that before introduction of the English system of education by Lord Macaulay, all religious books, small religious books which were kept in homes, were looked for by the police and a bonfire was made in villages and towns so that people got scared to learn and read the mother tongue. That's how it was smashed. And this continued. For us in Punjab, the legacy continued. The whole country was divided on linguistic lines in 1960s. Punjab was not. Punjab had to court arrest of 80,000 people. A few thousand had to give their lives away. And then what we got was a Punjab, which was devoid of its Punjabi speaking areas, which were given to Himachal Pradesh and Haryana. And to Delhi. And ladies and gentlemen, you will be surprised to know when I ask you. In 1961, what was the second language of the neighboring state of Haryana from which, which was carved out of Punjab? Haryana. You, you all know about Haryana. Till very recently, just about 10 years ago, the second language in Haryana was Telugu. The second language in Haryana was Telugu. Bansi Rao started this. I don't want Punjabi in Haryana, even if I know that 40% of my population is Punjabi speaking. But I want to kill Punjabi and therefore we have Telugu as a second language. Even if there is not one single Telugu speaking person from, uh, from that state. So what I think, sir, what I think, ladies and gentlemen, that this stopping either in the High Court or anywhere else is actually the suppression of the nationalistic level of community and This is my opinion. A Sikh who is very clear about his Punjabi will have national, nationalistic aspirations. So must kill his mother tongue. Kill it. A Tamil who is very strong about knowing the fact that his is the only state in the whole world which has a Tamil university. 
It's unfortunate that the number of Tamil teachers in the Tamil University are far less now than what they were when the university started. And also knowing that Tamil is a classical language, government declares it. We they, they do do all kinds of uh, uh, functions during the uh, and the days that they observe. No, we cannot we cannot have it as a as a, as a fourth language. We cannot have it as a, as a first language in school. So what what this this. I mean, I don't know, I read this entire document which was given to me as basic material. Section 348, Article 348, Subsection 2. There is no mention of Supreme Court intervention, is there? There is no mention. Is there any mention of Supreme Court intervention in the official language that? No, there is no intervention. Then suddenly, when the government of Tamil Nadu says that yes, Tamil should be the state language, when the Bar Association of Tamil Nadu says, of the, uh, uh, of the Madras High Court says that it, it can be the, the official language, when the Advocates Association says, when the Chief Minister writes to the government of India saying that please get us the permission of the President of India, Suddenly something comes out that okay, you know, now you take permission from the Supreme Court of it. No, no relationship with any act as much as I have studied, sir. Please correct me if I'm wrong. No mention anywhere. And then when the, the contesting lawyers, Mr. Bhagwat, Bhagwat Singh and others, when they file a petition saying that Please provide us with what the Supreme Court has written. What is the logic that they have, uh, 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 have, they have mentioned? And then they file right up to the Commissioner of Information right, and no information is provided because they said that it is under consideration. So ladies and gentlemen, I personally think that you have to continue to wage your struggle. It's not going to be easy. As my previous speaker told me, told all of you, that it took nearly four to five centuries for English to become a court language after Latin and French. Five centuries. But you know that was not the age of the internet. Today we are far better off. But we just have to continue to wage this struggle. You will have to come to Punjab in support of Pan Punjabi. We will all have to go in support. I was surprised and shocked to listen to him that Malayali was declared the official language of Kerala not very recently, a few years ago. Four states petition for Hindi. And they got the permission because they wanted to use Hindi as the court language. And Hindi, quote unquote, is our national language. I'm saying quote unquote because I am not against any language. My religious scripture, Guru Granth Sahib, contains more than 30 languages. I am not against any language, but I am definitely against imposition of any language on me. I do not agree with what you say, but I will lay down my life for you to have your say. I will not allow imposition of Hindi or English and on me. So we have to continue to be the first one. We cannot stop this. Such meetings will have to be more and more. In Punjab, recently, they celebrated what they called Hindi Pandarwara, Hindi fortnight. So you will go, what do they do? They tell managers of banks, if you do more work in Hindi, 
will give you more money. Will give you more perks. Sorry. Will give you more perks. They tell schools and colleges the same. And tell started from Punjab. Bharti Mittal's grandfather was a pawn seller in the streets of Ludhiana. Now he is a multi-millionaire. The language that is used in Punjab on all their networks is Hindi and English, not Punjabi. Not Punjabi. When Punjab was divided on linguistic lines, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, more than 45% of the population disowned their mother tongue. Disowned. The census numbers are approved. It was left to one university teacher in Chandigarh who took a small tape recorder, went to railway stations, bus stations, schools, colleges and recorded the conversation between people to say that look, they are actually speaking Punjabi but only on the record they have to be as their language. And I am very highly happy to share, I am forgetting the name of the gentleman. There is a Tamil professor in Punjab University today in Chandigarh. I have his video with me on the phone. He is a Tamil professor at the Punjab University in Chandigarh who every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning for the last 17 years goes to the Postgraduate Institute of Medical Science that is the PGI hospital to teach the nuances of Punjabi to the Tamil doctors and nurses there. And he was the only one that the present government took oath. There were two ministers who took oath in Hindi and Sanskrit, Congress minister. He was the only one who officially said, Punjab ka khate ho. He is the one who said it. All other political parties did not even notice it. So I personally think that this comes from what Sunad Kumar from Kerala has also said. And in conclusion, may I say, that we need to usher in a mother language movement. If the governments want to observe a Hindi fortnight, let us observe a mother language, not mother language day, but a mother language month. Let us have a Tamil mother language month in Punjab and a Punjabi mother language month in Tamil Nadu. Let us have an online campaign. And as I was reading this book, let us have more copies of Hirapu Hirati Hiratu to be printed and distributed, which contains legal documents in the Tamil language, if I'm not wrong. So we need more copies of that. And I also want to say in conclusion, sir, ladies and gentlemen, let us not oppose English. Let us not oppose English. Let us not stop our progeny from learning English also. And I am very clear, the documents are also very clear, that when we are ushering in a Tamil pro Tamil movement, we are also saying that all documents will be in Tamil and in English. Opposing English will not go down well with the young generation. Opposing English will not help us in achieving our mission. 
And I also want to say, do not wait for the government to start the infrastructure of translation for all your legal work. It is the it is on the it is on the response it is the responsibility of the legal fraternity. Whatever important judgments you have should immediately be translated, whether the government does it or not. Do it pro bono. Do one page a day. Share that. Like it's common on the internet. So that four years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, or whenever, the government exceeds, accedes to your demand. Part of your infrastructure is ready. <coughs> Do not wait for the 22 crores to come from the government for translation purposes. Start contributing your bit. And also, if I may add, the Allahabad High Court judgment, when they accepted the, the when, when, they, when they accepted Hindi as the language of the Allahabad High Court, one of the lines was very, very, very important for me. And it says, language is life and logic. When I met Selva Kumar, when he received me at the airport, I asked him, why do you want Tamil as the code language? And his answer was, almost in the lines of language, language is life and logic. And as my predecessor spoke, the speaker said, what is happening in the court? The plaintiff doesn't understand, the defendant doesn't understand. But this is not to say, I have been clear about this, that the legal fraternity is responsible in any manner. The legal fraternity is not. But whatever resistance, this movement may be coming, may be coming from the legal fraternity also. So we need to address that. I am not saying that we need to contest it, but we need to address it. We need to rebuild a body of knowledge. We need to set up a system whereby a client is able to understand. There should be somebody. The, the, the NGO movements are happening for all kinds of things. So there, there can be an NGO which can from 5 to 7 in the evening explain to the plaintiff and defendant what happened in his court in his mother tongue. Why not? And if done so, he will be better placed. And gradually, this movement will gather more strength. So I stand in solidarity with this cause. I assure you that I will do whatever I can to support Tamil as the code language of the Madras Act. Thank you.